Marcus Conti reporting on uh, today the uh, Michael Cohen, Michael Cohen testifying to uh, to the uh, to Congress, right? Reading his statement, facing three years in prison, and it's very it's very interesting. I want to just try to uh, inject some sanity into what's being said and what's going on. The uh, I mean, it, it's startling, startling revelations. Not so much in legality, the legality of how Trump operates did trump break the law did he collude with the russians all that stuff but the the piercing into trump's character the character let's call it a character assassination by trump's 10-year personal attorney michael cohen is is just riveting when you listen to him say it is it believable is it uh it it does it does to me i mean listening to the testimony and Knowing the the nature of this, the the way a guy like Trump operates, kind of the gangster stuff, but let let's it does seem believable. But let's just we'll look at um, some revelations. Uh, Trump never uh, instructed Cohen to lie to Congress. Uh, Cohen calls him a, a con man. Uh, but again, I want to I want to get into the legalities of it, right? Um, that he he allegedly Cohen allegedly said that uh, Trump ordered him to lie, though there's no evidence. He admits that he didn't lie. Trump never instructed him to lie to Congress, right? He talks about WikiLeaks, uh, tax evasion. So let, let's just get the things that that uh, are irrelevant out of the way because, first of all, Michael Cohen is... Michael Cohen is a lawyer for Trump who is guilty of process crime, meaning that he's not guilty of, Trump is not guilty of lying and Cohen is not guilty of lying. Cohen is guilty of lying to Congress, right? That is the crime, right? So that's a process crime about a Moscow, uh, the Moscow Tower Project. It had nothing to do with tax. It had nothing to do with election rigging or collusion. It was all about Trump's money. So what we're hearing from is a guy who committed a process crime, and he testifies that Trump never told him to lie to Congress. So let's let's start there. Trump never told Cohen to lie to Congress. Later, during the campaign, Mr. Trump did not directly tell me to lie to Congress. That's not how he operates. In conversations we had during the campaign, at the same time, I was... That's it. Just cut him off. He said it, right? Trump never instructed him to lie to Congress, right? Okay, so that's that's the end of that. That's the end of it, right? Did Trump tell him to lie about other stuff in his office, about Stormy Daniels and all that bullshit? That's not the point. That's that's irrelevant. Did Trump instruct Michael Cohen to lie to Congress to cover up facts? The answer is no. You just heard it from from his own his own mouth. The other thing is, uh, the other irrelevance are the payoff to a porn star. It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. That's a businessman trying to cover his trails, trying to trying to protect his brand and paying off a hooker to shut up. Uh, there's, no, there's no crime there, right? Um, it, the, the, the allegation that Trump paid for dirt on Hillary Clinton during the campaign, pfft, that's not illegal either. That's called can't, that's called uh, opposition research. When someone comes to you and says, "I got dirt on your uh, on your uh, you know your in it, your to the guy that you that you're running against," uh, okay, I'm listening. What do you got? You know, that's not illegal. It's not illegal whether it's whoever the fuck somebody comes in and offers you opposition research. So let's let's continue with the uh, with the clips here because there's some really good ones. Um, let me just get up to here. Right, so this is um, Com- Trump's 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 a con man, and he had no interest in the American people. He was all about his brand. This is fucking wild. Working very closely with him for more than ten years as his executive vice president and special counsel, and then as personal attorney when he became president. When I first met Mr. Trump. He was a successful entrepreneur, a real estate giant, and an icon. Being around Mr. Trump was intoxicating. 
when you were in his presence, you felt like you were involved in something greater than yourself, that you were somehow changing the world. I wound up touting the Trump narrative for over a decade. That was my job. Always stay on message. There's nothing illegal about anything that he's saying. Just be aware that, that there's the, the object here is are you he's assassinating Trump's character. That's what he is doing. And is he a formidable opinion? Yeah, well, he was close to him for 10 years. He just told you. But there's nothing illegal being revealed here. That's the point. Always defend. It monopolized my life. That was his At choice. First, I worked mostly on real estate developments and other business transactions. Shortly thereafter, Mr. Trump brought me into his personal life and private dealings. Over time, I saw his true character revealed. Mr. Trump is an enigma. He is complicated, as am I. He is both good and bad, as do we all. But the bad far outweighs the good. And since taking office, he has become the worst version of himself. He is capable of behaving kindly, but he is not kind. He is capable of committing acts of generosity, but he is not generous. He is capable of being loyal, but he is fundamentally disloyal. Donald Trump is a man who ran for office to make his brand great, not to make our country great. He had no desire or intention to lead this nation, only to market himself and to build his wealth and power. Mr. Trump would often say, this campaign was going to be the greatest infomercial in political history. He never expected to win the primary. He never expected to win the general election. The campaign for him was always a marketing opportunity. See, that's that's some powerful stuff right there because it it it's nothing again, nothing illegal. A guy running for president, he doesn't, nobody thinks they're going to become the president. I'm going to win the presidency? What are you, crazy, right? It's so outrageous, uh, an idea, uh, and Trump was uh, able to pull it off. But that, again, the, the, his testimony that, that uh, Trump what, didn't expect to win is not that shocking. But his, his testimony that Trump didn't give a shit about the people Right, like he, it was all about his own brand. That's pretty powerful stuff, man. I thought that was, I, I thought that was very, very interesting that he said that. Um, let's let's. This is more. I knew early on in my work for Mr. Trump that he would direct me to lie to further his business interests. That there's there's Ill illegalities there when you ask your lawyer to lie for you, right? But that's not the that's not what's on the table here. Billionaires and millionaires and people with a lot of money, corporate corporate corporate, you know, entities, they lie all the time. They lie in court. That's what lawyers are hired to do. They go into court and they lie. Right? So he they have immunity, right? But they have uh, client uh, lawyer privilege, right? And that's why you hire a lawyer to lie for you. But that's not there's no you want to change the law, change the law. Don't allow lawyers to lie like that. But that's, again, nothing illegal about it. It's just, it's just interesting to hear the president of the United States, how he operated in his own life. And I am ashamed to say that when it was for a real estate mogul in the private sector, I considered it trivial. As the president, I consider it significant and dangerous. But in the mix, lying for Mr. Trump was normalized and no one around him questioned it. In fairness, no one around him today questions it either. All right, so he's, he's saying that, that lying became normalized, all right? So let's move on. It's not, it, it's, that's what, that's who, is Trump an honest guy? Of course he lies. He, he's, you catch him lying in a, in a sentence throughout the campaign. He lies about the, the statistics, he lies about the numbers, the economy is doing fantastic. He, he says there's millions of people lined up along the border. He makes up all kinds of shit, right? He's an old fucking liar. Right? But again, that's, I mean, that's up to the electorate. People want to still support him, 
Well, that's on you, you know. So let's see what else he says. This, the, here's, here's where he talks about uh, WikiLeaks. Listen to this. A lot of people have asked me about whether Mr. Trump knew about the release of the hacked documents, the Democratic National Committee email, ahead of time. And the answer is yes. As I earlier stated, Mr. Trump knew from Roger Stone in advance about the WikiLeaks drop of emails. In July of 2016, days before the Democratic Convention, I was in Mr. Trump's office when his secretary announced that Roger Stone was on the phone. Mr. Trump put Mr. Stone on the speakerphone. Mr. Stone told Mr. Trump that he had just gotten off the phone with Julian Assange and that Mr. Assange told Mr. Stone that within a couple of days, there would be a massive dump of emails that would damage Hillary Clinton's campaign. Mr. Trump responded by stating to the effect, wouldn't that be great? So that's pretty interesting, right? But it's factually incorrect, right? So Roger Stone calls Trump. Trump is Trump is a fool. Trump doesn't know what was going on with WikiLeaks. Look, WikiLeaks and Julian Assange, the date is July. He said that this happened in July of 2016. But actually, Julian Assange at WikiLeaks had alluded to the fact that WikiLeaks was going to do a dump way before that. It was May, April, May, June. It was not leading up to the convention, but we had known Julian, Julian Assange. That's why Julian Assange is no longer in sight, right? Because he's, where is he? Where is Julian Assange now? Julian Assange can easily discredit this testimony because, because, Look, everyone knew, anyone who was paying attention at the time knew that WikiLeaks had the emails. What this testimony confirms is that Russia had nothing to do with it. And fucking Roger Stone is probably lying that he talked to Julian Assange. And even if he did, Julian Assange was talking to everybody through his website. So the fact that that they're trying to pin the WikiLeaks leak on Russian collusion is now, according to Trump's own attorney, if the testimony is accurate and believable on the other stuff, then it has to be believable that WikiLeaks, uh, that there is no, there is no direct connection between Russian collusion. It supports the idea that it was a leak from inside. Someone got the email, got, got access to the meme emails and dumped it on WikiLeaks. That's all it is. And Roger Stone, I'm telling you, the DNC guys like Seth Rich and the kids that were inside the DNC that had that stuff, the last person they would have went to was Roger Stone because he was a right-wing kook in the eyes of the DNC. Remember, they were Bernie supporters. They wanted to see Bernie Sanders win, right? And they, they were getting cheated by Hillary Clinton's team. So they took the emails and they saw a reliable source in WikiLeaks to dump it to WikiLeaks, right? There's no fucking way on earth they would have ever went to Roger Stone, right? And if Roger Stone would have had it, Roger Stone certainly would have handed it to some idiot in, in, in England because that's how they viewed WikiLeaks. They were fools. They were stupid. They were, you know, he would have given it to Fox News. He would have went on Fox News himself and revealed it. He wouldn't have gave something that juicy to WikiLeaks. So... Again, the, the Cohen's Cohen's uh, trying to you know trying to say that that um, that uh, WikiLeaks gave something you know that that Trump and Stone had anything to do with it is just ridiculous. So, what else do we have here? This is um, all right. Let's talk about Trump the racist. This is this is devastating. I mean, this is really some really some powerful shit. Listen to this shit. Right. Mr. Trump is a racist. The country has seen Mr. Trump court white supremacists and bigots. You have heard him call poorer countries his private shithole. Right. Now this is again nothing illegal here about being a racist. But and and you so far you've only heard Cohen say, oh he's a racist. But let's hear the evidence. In private, he is even worse. He once asked me if I could name a country run by a black person that wasn't a sh 
shithole. This was when Barack Obama was president of the United States. And while we were once driving through a struggling neighborhood in Chicago, he commented that only black people could live that way. And he told me that black people would never vote for him because they were too stupid. And yet, I continue to work for him. So that's pretty powerful t- uh, testimony right there. That's his right-hand guy inside his office saying, Trump is a racist. And he, he gave a bunch of actual quotes. Are, are they believable? Is he making it up? I, I don't know. I, I think it's, you know, it's, it, he's credible. I mean, he's, he, he seems to be credible. He's not inflating any of the stuff uh, surrounding WikiLeaks or any of that so far. So here's, this is another one, tax evasion. Experience that Mr. Trump inflated his total assets when it served his purposes, such as trying to be listed amongst the wealthiest people in Forbes and deflated his assets to reduce his real estate taxes. I'm sharing with you two newspaper articles side by side that are examples of Mr. Trump inflating and deflating his assets, as I said, to suit his financial interests. These are exhibit two to my testimony. So, so there, there, that's interesting. I mean, that's, that's actual inflating and deflating his assets uh, to the IRS is illegal. So that's, there's, something, there's something to that, uh, if you want to take a look at it. I don't fucking know. Uh, here's, um, here's, this, is, this is interesting, too. Um, uh, he, th- he had Cohen threatened... Trump's colleges to keep his keep their mouths shut on Trump's poor grades and poor SAT scores. Check this out. Man, I'm talking about a man who declares himself brilliant, but directed me to threaten his high school, his colleges, and the college board to never release his grades or SAT scores. As I mentioned, I'm giving the committee today copies of a letter I sent at Mr. Trump's direction threatening these schools with civil and criminal actions if Mr. Trump's grades or SAT scores were ever disclosed without his permission. And these are under Exhibit C, uh, 6. The irony wasn't lost on me at the time that Mr. Trump in 2011 had strongly criticized President Obama for not releasing his grades. As you can see in Exhibit 7, Mr. Trump declared, let him show his records after calling President Obama a terrible student. Uh, so he, so he, that's, is it illegal? I mean, is it illegal to, to try to suppress your own public record, your own record at your school? No, it's not. But it is, again, it's character. It's Trump's character. What is he hiding? Is he a, was he a C student? So what? Big deal. You know, most you know most leaders are B C students. They're not high intellects, right? Right. That's that's just a fact. So here's another one. Da- this is draft dodger. This is <laughs> because he likes people who weren't captured. At the same time. Mr. Trump tasked me to handle the negative press surrounding his medical deferment from the Vietnam draft. Mr. Trump claimed it was because of a bone spur, but when I asked for medical records, he gave me none and said that there was no surgery. He told me not to answer the specific questions by reporters, but rather offer simply the fact that he received a medical deferment. He finished the conversation, the following comment. You think I'm stupid? Not going to Vietnam. And I find it ironic, Mr. President, that you are in Vietnam right now. That's powerful, right? So I I find it ironic that that the Senate, not ironic at all, that the Senate would hold such a thing while Trump is in in, uh, Vietnam right now, talking to Kim Jong-un. The idea of this is to derail... Trump's conversations there, but nonetheless, right, his any effectiveness to make him look stupid and weak and a con man, but nonetheless, there's evidence there that Trump, according to his attorney, lied to um, 
lied about his medical condition to to avoid uh, the Vietnam War. He was a draft dodger, right? And he, he provided, uh, his attorney has never seen any medical documents to suggest that he, in fact, had these burn, bone spurs in his foot. But then he can accuse uh, Pocahontas for trying to get advantage for her Indian heritage through DNA. So what's worse, Trump lying about his bone spurs to get out of Vietnam or Pocahontas is uh, lying about her American heritage to get into Harvard. I, I don't know. I put them right in the same category. I think Trump is worse, you know, when you really think about it. So um, here's, the, here's the, the final play. And this is Michael Cohen in his own words saying that there was no Russian collusion. And Mike. yet I continue to work for him. Questions have been raised about whether I know of direct evidence that Mr. Trump or his campaign colluded with Russia. I do not. I do not. And I want to be clear, but I have my suspicions. We don't care about your suspicions. Do you have evidence that Donald Trump colluded with the Russians? I do not. The only thing that Trump knew about Russian collusion was what Roger Stone fucking told him in July. And if you were paying, if Donald Trump was paying attention to the right information stream, he would have found that out anyway. You didn't need Roger Stone and, and Jerome Corsi to parrot what Julian Assange was tweeting out on his own reconnaissance. Right, so it's, it's, it was, it's an interesting study. I mean, I, I find that, you know, um, you know, and people are going to say, I know in the comments, oh, he's a fucking liar. He's a fucking liar. I, I don't know about that. I think he's, he's pretty, he's pretty, he's a credible witness. He was close to, um, to Trump in terms of legalities, uh, about Russian collusion. There was no, he gave no evidence, no testimony that there was collusion other than the Roger Stone thing, you know, um, so there is no collusion there's purchasing of <clears throat> dirt on hillary which isn't illegal that's you know uh opposition research the stormy daniels stuff not illegal we know about it All right so i mean you know mule through it but uh my take on it is that he is credible and that was one hell of a, uh, a character assassination on the part of michael cohen marcus conti reporting